Hi everyone, this is Hamida. Welcome to Safi Law Channel. Today's topic is relating to absolute liability. Okay. Before going to start absolute liability, we'll just briefly discuss about a no fault liability and strict liability. No fault liability in the sense what without any fault, without any negligent act of the defendant, still the defendant is liable. Such kind of liability is called no fault liability. Generally, if any tortious act committed, then only the defendant is liable. But in the no fault liability, without any negligence, without any fault, still that defendant is liable. Such kind of liability is called no fault liability. Here we know that that no fault liabilities are three kinds of liabilities are there. That is the strict liability, absolute liability, and the vicarious liability. In the previous video, we have discussed about the uh, strict liability along with that uh, various uh, cases, uh, exceptions of that particular case also we have discussed. But still, I'll go with the essentials and few of the classifications and the uh, few points we have discussed. Uh, relating to the uh, particular case of the Reliance versus Fletcher relating to the strict liability. Okay, now strict liability we can also call the no fault liability or the rule of Reliance versus Fletcher case, or we can also call the doctrine of uh, strict liability, or we can also call the the rule in Reliance versus Fletcher's. Okay, so this actually this uh, strict strict liability arises from the legal maxim. Or it's relating to the Latin term sic utere tuo at elinum non leaders. Sic utere tuo at elinum non leaders, which means enjoy your own property in such a manner not injured to the another person's property or to the particular person. Means what? Here a person can enjoy their property but not to injure to the other's property. So these things which has discussed in the particular maxim which one is relating to the strict liability. Now we will go to the classification of the strict liability. The classifications, various classifications discussed in the strict liability that is the first one it is rule in reliance versus Fletcher and the liabilities for the dangerous operations next one liabilities for the animals liabilities for dangerous structures and the premises first we will go to the rule reliance uh, rule in the reliance versus fletcher here this case we have discussed but in the next slide also few of the essential will try to discuss you the second classification of the strict liability it is relating to the liabilities for the dangerous operation if it anything uh, is relating to the dangerous operation dangerous things then without any fault without any negligence the liability arises okay so then next the third one classification discussed in the strict liability it is the liability for animals means if the animals committed any act any unlawful act any wrongful act then that the animals are not liable the owners of the animals liable means that liability uh, creates to the uh, owners of the animals so such kind of means here the owners not committed any tortious act animals only committed the tortious act still the owners of the animals liable and such liability uh, such classification which has mentioned in the strict liability another classification also discussed in the uh, strict liability that is the liability for dangerous structures and premises if any uh, dangerous structures are there if any dangerous premises are there then that the, without the any fault or without any negligence that liability will arise so these all are the classification mentioned in the strict liability now we will go to the essentials of the strict liability or the essentials uh, arises from the particular case of the Reliance versus Fletcher case. In the Reliance versus Fletcher case, uh, Justice Blackburn mentioned the three essential elements. Uh, that essential element, the first one, it is the dangerous substances non-natural use of land and escape. So, we know that the Reliance versus Fletcher case is relating to the reservoir related case, right? So, here in that reservoir related case, some dangerous substances are there. Okay, so that dangerous substances, it's relating to non-natural use of land. Non-natural use of land in the sense, we know that that reservoir is a non-natural, it's not for the natural use of land, it is the non-natural use of land. And that dangerous substances from the non-natural use of land escape from the defendant area to the plaintiff area, means escape outside of the area happened, where in the case of Reliance versus Fletcher case. So, these three essential described in the strict liability. Okay. Again, 
yeah five of the exceptional exceptions also mentioned in the strict liability that is the first one it is related to plaintiff the wrongdoer and the second act of the word third word the uh, act of the third party consent of the parties uh, statutory uh, authority or the statutory act uh, act of the stranger so these all are the exceptions which has mentioned in the strict li liability now coming to the absolute liability absolute liability actually they have that liability is a complete liability comparatively strict liability is more serious in nature if it is relating to any uh, pharmaceutical related or any hazardous nature in related companies or uh, plants are there in that situation that liability they have that that liability is called the absolute complete liability arises okay so now we'll go to the absolute from the uh, absolute liability three essentials described that three essential elements are first one it is enterprise second one is hazardous activity and that third essential element discussed in the absolute liability is escape not necessary escape not necessary first we will go to the enterprise enterprise it is any related company pharmaceutical companies or any kind of enterprises is not related to particular persons property or any other uh, related uh, animals related uh, activity or any other activity. but if it is relating to the companies or any enterprises then that this absolute liability arises second one hazardous activity so that enterprises is relating to the hazardous activity means the hazardous harmful activities hazardous hazardous in this is what dangerous activity must be there in that particular enterprise next one escape not necessary so that hazardous activity or the hazardous related things not necessary to escape outside of the area where when we go to the strict liability here in the strict liability the third essential element they describe about the escape outside of the area means escape happened from one person's land to the another uh, another person's land but here in the absolute liability escape not necessary if that the, the hazardous related material covered in that particular area particular enterprise it is enough this one which is comes under the absolute liability okay now we will go to the two landmark cases relating to the absolute liability that is mc mehta versus union of india or we can also call the union carbet car carbet corporation versus union of india or the bhopal gas leakage okay so here union carbet corporations relating to the uh, us based related pesticide company situated in india situated in bhopal here in that uh, particular pesticide company the gas was leaked that gas name is a mic gas that is methyl isocyanate gas okay for the leakage of the methyl isocyanate many of the people nearly 3000 people died and the 6 lakhs people permanently disabled okay so from the, this is the this was the biggest disaster happened in india i am saying about the strict liability actually adopted in england but this absolute liability adopted in india means this one absolute liability came in india whereas the strict liability came in england okay so this strict liability also followed by the various country but after the disasters happened this absolute liability uh, related principles followed by the different other countries also now we will discuss about the absolute liability uh, relating to the union carbides corporation here that many of the people died and many of the uh, people permanently disabled then that the uh, the peace people filed a uh, writ petition in the supreme court of india in the year of 1984 so here what happened many of the uh, discussions happened by the defendant the defendant uh, they try to use the various exceptions of the strict liabilities they try to use the various exception because of the in the strict liability five exceptions are there no so uh, these defendants they try try to use the those uh, exceptions but later on finally in the year of 1991 the bhagavati just uh, justice bhagavati the decided in this absolute liability no exceptions are there without that exception the person in the in the sense the defendants all liable and they have to give the huge compensation to the victim parties so in this case uh, uh, bhopal gas tragedy case uh, crores of compensation given by the defendants to the plaintiff party even though they have till now they many of the people are getting that compensation 
okay so this one happened in the year of 18 uh, 1984 in the next year in the 1985 one of the another disaster happened and that is uh, related to the oleum gas uh, leakage it is a plant named sri ram food and fertilizers so sri ram food fertilizers related case also here also the mc mehta versus union of india in this case uh, uh, writ petition filed in the supreme court in that in this case one of the advocate died and many of the people uh, disabled permanently disabled so that many cases happened many many people they are trying to use the various exceptions what already they have given in the strict liability so that that uh the supreme court finally they decided in this uh these kind of cases if the three essential elements satisfied what are the those three essential elements first one it is the enterprise related and second one is a hazardous activity and third one it's not necessary to escape not necessary to escape if three three essential elements are satisfied then this one it's not goes to the strict liability and this uh, comes under the absolute liability because of here the absolute uh, uh, liability there are no exceptions so finally absolute liability is a more uh, uh, means what they have to be liable and they have to be give the compensation without using of any exceptions these things discussed okay so uh, the uh, in the next uh, video we will try to discuss about the vicarious liability uh, relating to the various master and servant uh, servant relationship master and agent relationship even the vicarious liability of the state these things we will discuss in the next video thank you